Hello everybody, it's Romania Black, and we are on episode 16 of Ace of the Diamond Challenge. And so, yeah, last episodes, man, we really are starting to get into the dynamics of these players. Uh, Sawamura and Haruichi and Furuya, they made the first string, but they've been through a week of hell in training camp <laughs> to prep for the next game that's upcoming. And it's been decided that Sawamura and Furuya are going to pitch the first game and the coach is doing it basically to test their stamina and see how they're going to perform after doing a week's worth of training nonstop. And then have Tamba come in in the other game. And I like that the coach is like, I don't care how they do. I just want to see what they can do. And so it's like, Ugh! but we left off last episode, the coach being a badass and just coming out of nowhere, but also starting to get into Haruichi while we're dealing with Sawamura and Furuya dealing with their pitching styles and working with Chris. We've also got Haruichi coming to the realization that his brother, it's not going to be so easy keeping up with his big brother because his big brother has a couple years of training under the Sato uh, tutelage under his wing that Haruichi just doesn't have yet. So lots of rivalries being, being set up and lots of different things at work here. So I'm really excited to see what all we come uh and see in these next three episodes. We're having our first game. Should be good. Uh, I'm curious to see how Sawamura and Faria are even going to do in this. <laughs> and if they're going to do well. Or if Tanba's going to have to show, come in and show them like, what being an ace is all about. So, should be pretty exciting. But yeah, I've, uh, I'm ready to dive into these episodes and see what's in store. The last couple of episodes have been really, really good. They were some of my favorites. And so, so far this season just keeps on building. And what I really like about it is that watching it in these three episode spans, we get these mini arcs kind of realized each set of episodes, which is really nice. But it also goes by pretty darn quick. Like I'm sitting here for like an hour and a half watching and then talking with you all about it, but it doesn't feel like that at all, which is really cool. So yeah, let's do this, shall we? We are gonna start uh, episode 16 of Ace of the Diamond here in five, four, three, two, one, and let's go. Oh, oh, this was, this was a good set of episodes. This was a good, especially episode 17, episode 17, but the ending of episode 18, whoo, Miyuki, oh my gosh, there's, there's lots of things to talk about. So I was talking about this in one of the reactions, but I kind of like with the idea of the picture in that the role of the pitcher, there's so many different strategies that can be implemented to doing a good pitch. Because I was talking about this in the, in the reaction. With like setters and high cue, you it's more about the setters having different personalities than it is about strategy. Because with volleyball, I mean, the way that they set the ball, they have different techniques that they can do and different combinations that they can do of plays. But with a setter, they're the conductor. And so it's really more of them working with the team to establish like a rhythm and establish a kind of setup and how the whole game is going to go and who they're going to rely on, etc. But with the pitchers in this game, there's a bit more to it. There's not only that tempo that they set, but there's different strategies. They can be like, they can use breaking balls, they can use moving fastballs or fastballs or curveballs or sliders. There's a, there's a lot more technical variances that can go with each pitcher. Each pitcher kind of develops their own style for how they do things. So I really, really like that. And I love the concept that Furuya and Saomura, they're both these first year pitchers who have very similar problems. <laughs> they both have the problem of being without much control. <laughs> they both have control issues. And with Furuya, it's a stamina. With Furuya, it's him getting overexerted and tired and not being able to keep up in a game. And with Sawamura, it's more his control and not necessarily his confidence, but his ability to figure out what he's going to do. Right? And so the coach, man, yeah, Karaoke, that was cruel what he did to Furuya, making him pitch the first five innings after he knew he was tired. And it's funny because they, they build Furuya up to be this prodigy pitcher and like, not necessarily a prodigy pitcher, but they're like, he'll be the ace. He has the personality to be the ace, but he gave up 11 runs 
and Sawamura only gave up three. And they seem to trust me, Sawamura less than Furuya. And I think it's probably because Furuya, his potential is easier to see at this point than Sawamura's is. Sawamura is still like so basic in a lot of ways that he doesn't have, he's the secret weapon. And it kept reminding me of Slam Dunk when they said you're the secret weapon. It was like Furuya is very like Rukawa has all the potential right out there in front and Sawamura is like the secret weapon where it's all going to be like slowly revealed over time. So it's like, okay, cool. But um, I have on my notes here. So I like the idea in this that, that this team, Osaka Kiryu, that the coach specifically had them come to the practice game from a long distance. Like they're from Osaka, which is set up to be a, quite a ways from them. And I like right off the bat that we're given the insight that the coach doesn't want just any local team to see Furuya and Sawamura pitch. He wants to get like an outside team from far away because like the coach says like, oh, these are your secret weapons and you don't want to show them off yet to everybody else. It's like, mm, smart play, smart play. And I also think it's cruel of the coach, but very effective that he got a highly offensive team to face them in this practice game. He's like, I don't care how you guys do, just just do your best. And it's like, this team is like known for being highly offensive and you're gonna set your two rookie pitchers against these players that are like excellent at batting. Like that's so, it's like, it's brutal. And I like that he met with the third years and the second years and he's like, we're gonna put these kids through the ringer and show them what's, how it's done. So just, here's what we do. And it's so like methodical. Like it's just the way they thought everything out. But yeah, with uh, Faruya, his whole issue is stamina and endurance and ball control. Ball control and endurance. And I like that he told him, he's like, don't talk to him. Don't don't be like you are going to be with Saomura. Because Faruya, it's funny, the way that the teammates interact with Faruya and Saomura is drastically different because it's catering to what their needs are as pitchers, right? And so we see a little bit of this with Tachi this episode too. But Furuya pitching over 100 pitches by the fourth inning. And they're like, yeah, he's tired. But he's still going. Like, he still has the drive. And Miyuki's like, he has what it takes to be the ace. Look at him. Because at first you're like, why did he call that timeout and have Miyuki come up there? But it's, it's because he was embarrassed. He didn't want to reveal his strategy to the other team and let them know that he didn't know what to do. And it's like, ah. Like, Furuya and Salmura handle things very differently. Like, Furuya is quiet and inquisitive and introspective and like very soft-spoken like on the mound whereas Salmer is like let's go team like exact polar opposites and I love that line that they that the teammates tell Furuya and that the the loud spiky haired the beard beard senpai tells Furuya where he's like stop playing by yourself and again, it's polar opposites of Sawamura because Sawamura, I mean, Miyuki even comments, he's like, Sawamura is able to handle these situations where a negative thing, like a negative, a, a play doesn't throw Sawamura off if something doesn't go his way because like Miyuki says, Sawamura has been on a sucky team for so long that he's used to plays happening and having to think on the fly, what do I do? And try to work with the situation. Whereas Furuya isn't quite on the up and up with that and doesn't exactly, he's so used to playing by himself, he doesn't have quite that trust in his teammates that Sawamura does. And so I, lo I love that the whole symbolism with the snow and him looking up and, and like till his fingers were losing circulation, practicing pitching, like it's, you can't help but like Faruya's character. He's one of those, he's not a prodigy, but he's one of those characters that works so hard and he's so dedicated to the sport and you just can't help but like him. It's the same way with Sawamura, just in a different perspective. But I love that idea about trust in your teammates. Tachi? Oh my god! Tachi! He He's the creepy one for the OP, officially. I love it. I love it. But um, he's basically like this series version of Bokuto. In, except if Bokuto was shy. Like that smile. And I love the idea that we've established here of how your teammates can affect the pitcher that there, it's, there's a lot more to it because like the players on Osaka, on Kiryu, they were like, oh, we love your smile, senpai, you can do it, go. It, it, it's the exact strategy that the teammates on Fukurodani used with Bokuto. It's just to build up his confidence and make, cause he's a player that clearly likes to have that confidence boost to perform well. And so we see that on display 
in Sato's case because with Fer- with Feruya at the end there, his teammates trust him and they give him some praise, and he's like, and then was at the angels part and says touched, like he's just he's so happy that his teammates acknowledged him, and it had that effect. And then with Sawamura, them like constantly telling him like what to do and what he's doing right and doing wrong, it's the same thing. So I like that we've established them. Um, but when Feruya was doing well there towards the end of the fifth inning. When he was doing well and was starting to get on a roll and was starting to look all badass, like the light hits him a certain way, we cut to Salamura, and Salamura's obviously mad because he's like, no, that should be me out there. I should be doing good. But then we cut to Tomba. We only saw Tomba a few times in these three episodes um, because Tomba didn't pitch today. But Tomba being super pissed off. Like, you can just tell he's mad. And I like that Maruichi... He was like, look, don't let these first years bother you. You're the ace of the team, and tomorrow you're going to get to prove it by pitching the whole game. And it's like, oh. Like, I, I'm very interested to see Tamba in the next set of episodes being the pitcher. Like, because apparently Samur and Furia, they're off next episode. They're, they might bat, but they're not going to be pitching any. So... It's going to be interesting, and Miyuki just got done telling Salomar that he needs to start paying more attention to the pitchers, so I wonder if tomorrow, or in the next set of episodes in the game that's going to happen tomorrow, if he's going to be watching Tamba and trying to learn from him. That's going to be interesting. So yeah, um, I like the comment about Furia where they note that Furia is actually a pretty good batter. Furia is a good batter. He's not a good outfielder. He's not the best, and, and Beard Senpai like, gets the ball from him a couple times, but they make the comment, Chris is like, he's too good of a batter to bench him. Like, he's a good pitcher, he has potential, but he's a good batter too, so we can't just not use him, and that's interesting to note. It's also interesting that Miyuki is not a very good batter. Miyuki's very inconsistent, and he's also left-handed. He's also a southpaw too, which is interesting that Miyuki is a southpaw. Very curious. Um... So, I like that the coach put Miyuki in charge of the pitchers to talk them through things. Uh, it's like it's like the biggest love triangle of a sports anime. Because, you know, normally, when you think of, like, the love triangles in a sports anime, it's like two, like, you know, hitters with a setter. In this case, it's the catcher and the two pitchers. It's like, ah, oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I know it's not canon, but it's so funny. It's, it's a love triangle of the ages. Um, but episode 17... Probably was Games Are Fun, probably one of my favorites so far this season. I just, I absolutely loved it. It was a lot of fun to see um, and Miyuki get so excited by Furia and Saomura. He's like, mm. But you can tell, you can tell Miyuki feels a little bit more confident with Furia right now because he just seemed a little bit more at ease and confident. He makes the note to Kuromochi that he doesn't quite feel like he can rely on Saomura yet. He doesn't feel like he's reliable, which is interesting to note. Um... And I love the title of episode 18. I hate it, but... And we've established that pitchers have to be egotists. Like Tamba, Furuya, Saumura, they're all egotists and self-centered in a way. But the catchers are self-centered too. And they and Saumura brings that out. He's like, Miyuki is self-centered. He's weird. I can't read him. I don't know if he likes me or not. I hate it, but I came to Sado to have him catch my balls. So... I love it. And poor Shirasu! Poor Shirasu! We're like three times this episode. Sarver was like, wait, who are you? And it's like, to be fair, we haven't seen Shirasu like this whole series until this episode, until episode 18. He's like, I'm a third year. Leave, what, what do you expect from me? Um, I do want to point out, again, Sarver only let them have three runs where Furuya let them have 11. Just saying. And... That glance between Miyuki and the coach when Sarmar got that first strike and they both looked at each other like, this is our secret weapon. This is this is going to work. This is going to be good. It's like, oh, seeing the potential there on display. They're all mutual egotists. I've got my notes here. Um, I also like, you know what? Despite everything, despite them being rivals, one thing I really like that this series has done is, yeah, it's establishing that Furuya and Sawamura, they are like peanut butter and jelly. They are total, they are opposites, they are not the same. But they somehow, like peanut butter and jelly, they gel together really well. Like they both end up coming out to the field. And the thing is, they don't just argue the whole time like Rukawa and Hanamichi do in Slam Dunk. 
they they both are pretty mutual about their they both know what they both are self aware at this point of what they need to improve upon to get better and they come out there late at night to practice with it together and then they have that little scuffle about the tire but it's not anything like hostile Samra is just like I do have my name on it and showing him but I I just like that their friendship is just it's so unusual and Furi is such an unusual character like he's not aloof but he's just a quiet introspective character but it's just I love it it's a great foil they're great foils for each other and then the ending of episode 18 holy cow that ending where Miyuki is talking to Kuromochi and they bring up the fact they're like so are you ready for tomorrow cuz I'm I'm wondering if I'm wondering if Miyuki is going to catch tomorrow for Tamba or if they're going to let Mayuichi Mar- in or not but Kuromochi makes a good point he's like Tamba doesn't like you he's like Tamba thinks that you talk you know you're too blunt to him being a year younger than him and you're not being respectful to his upperclassmen and Tamba doesn't like you and that lo- that wasn't like Gojo Jujutsu Kaisen level glaring that Miyuki does at the end where his eyes like turn dark that was like Dazai Gozo Gojo level of glaring where he's like I'll lie if I have to I'll say what I have to to make the pitchers do the best that they can and to make them work with me it's like ooh Ooh, which makes you wonder, like, what's he going to lie and say to Saumur and Furuya to make them do what he wants? But it's like, he's like, if I have to make him hate, if he hates me, so be it. I don't care. We're going to win the game and I'm going to make him do the best he can. It's like, ooh, Miyuki, Miyuki. But so, yeah, Mm, I don't know. I don't know. But this episode, I, I really love the coach, the coach for Kiryu amazing and him trying to figure out like what they're doing the whole time i yeah and how they're going to use these i'm surprised we didn't get anything with haruichi especially after we spent the last episode kind of building him up a little bit but i'm guessing that's going to come later he didn't really play this this game this round so that's interesting but yeah i these were all these episodes went by so fast they really did just getting this practice game over with and i like I like the Haruno and the girls that they make the that they made the opposing team uh, rice balls. They were like, "Here's some rice balls for the road. Thanks for playing us." And of course, the other team's like, "You guys get four girl managers, and they're all cute." Nah, 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 nah. It's like, hmm. But let me just say, Miyuki. Oh my God, y'all! How how many people watching this series just like simp over Miyuki like the whole time? Because dude, what a troll! But he gets so he gets animated so well in this series. I'm like the animators clearly know something's up with Miyuki. Um, I also love just Yuki in this episode. Yuki being the captain, like showing his strength, being unwavering, unflinching. Like I loved that this episode he gave up. He was just being totally stoic and on board with everything. And then we have Ju, we have Ryusuke and June. Like they're all. It's cool seeing the third years interact with our first year pitchers because they've played this game long enough. They know kind of like Miyuki what needs to be said. And I love that the the beard senpai, he was like, I've wanted to yell at Furuya all morning, but I was told I can't, so I have to hold back. And it's like, it, it's funny that they go along with the coach's requests, even when they themselves are like wanting to do the exact opposite. So I absolutely love it. It's wonderful. But yeah, I, this these are some really good episodes. Old Chris taking notes there. Talking with Ray and the coach. It's setting up some good things. It's setting up... I like the idea that they're setting up the Saumur and Furia could become regular pitchers if they can get some control and stamina built up. I like that. And I like it setting up, you know, for years to come with with the group. But, yeah, Tamba. What's Tamba going to do next episode? I wonder... I wonder if Tamba's going to make it the whole... Because he's had an injury before. That's the only thing that I keep... In the back of my head, I keep coming back to the idea that he's had an injury in the past. And I'm like, is that going to rear its head in these next couple episodes? I don't know. I don't know. But mm. I'm excited. I am excited to see uh, these next couple episodes and what's going to happen. So I'm curious to know what you all thought of episodes 16, 17, and 18. Um, They went by really quickly. And it was a good practice game. I, I don't need to see Tachi smile anytime soon, though. I'm good there. I've got my fill. <laughs> but in any case, I hope you all enjoyed these reactions. Please feel free to comment down below. Please, no spoilers. But yeah, next week. Next week, we'll look at episode 19, 20, and 21. 
and uh, see what all happens. I can't believe we're almost, well, no, there's 75 episodes. We're, we're like almost a third, <laughs> like almost a third of the way through. But in any case, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care. And yeah, I'll be back next week with more Ace of the Diamond. Bye.